From the beginning, the challenge of making a science fiction show was trying to innovate technically. As a filmmaker, there's nothing more fun than trying to find a way to shoot something that's never really been shot before. In Westworld, you're going to a place where you want to feel completely swept away by the reality of the space. So we knew we'd have to do as much production on location as possible, but it also meant that for the environments that didn't exist, we'd really want to go the extra mile to make sure that it felt as real as possible. The ability to composite backgrounds with blue screen, a trans light or a matte painting has been around since the beginning of filmmaking. And that's okay, but there's a million layers of information that are missing from a green screen shot. The light pollutes the entire frame and you have no sense of the reality of the space. As an alternative to green screen, we wanted to take projection and extend it to a number of different technical challenges. If you can see it on set on the day, it's that much more real, not just for you, but for your actors, for your crew. Working with Nathan Crowley, we were able to create the map from the control room, for the pilot. A lot of people think it's CG, but it's a practical effect of twin 4K projectors firing from a ceiling. It was a carved piece of styrofoam. We figured out a 2D move, but it dimensionalized and looked three-dimensional. When we came back into series production, I wanted to find ways in which we could expand the dimensions of this impossible facility. The Mason facility. What we're imagining is a 95-story building hidden inside a mesa in the desert. You can't go shoot there because it doesn't exist. Sure, you could do it with green screen or a matte painting. It just means as a filmmaker that you're very limited with how much you could do with the camera. We wanted to be unlimited in these sets. We wanted free reign to move the cameras where we wanted. So what we began developing was a technology that didn't exist at that point. We built our own supercomputer. We wanted to put a sensor on the camera, have a projector, a screen, and when I wanted the camera to move, we wanted to have backgrounds render in real time. We built this artificial environment in Unreal. There were a lot of things that looked really exciting, but there was a lot more of a lag. The lighting wasn't there, the shadows weren't quite there. When we were on a wider lens and moved the camera a lot, the background kind of drifted. The tools were vanishingly close, but it was not possible at that point. Then this season, I see the AirPod. And right then, I knew that Joan and I were gonna finally figure out a way to use LED walls. I had the privilege of working with John Favreau back in 2012. John invited us down to The Mandalorian to really see how all these things that he had learned had developed from a technology standpoint. And it turned out he'd been frustrated shooting blue screen and he was trying to build exactly the same thing. What I was surprised to realize is it was still using the same pieces. Unreal Engine, camera tracking. So thanks to the generosity of John and the innovation on the part of our team, we got to this place where you can create this artificial space and stand in it and light with it. When we started out in Hale's office, we wanted to build out a 3D photo reel view of the City of Arts and Sciences. Our approach was while we're there shooting with the actual actors, the exteriors, we're going to gather up all of that visual information and create a soundstage in Los Angeles that allows us to take a wormhole back to Valencia, whatever we want. The whole new challenge was taking all of these incredible digital ideas and saying, well, what happens if we do it on film? That's where, for us, the magic happened. A small army of technicians over at Epic and Unreal and Fuse helped shoot this on film. It's beautiful. The grain softens it and even makes it feel more real. But then when we got to the AirPod sequence, we really wanted to have these real environments. We went up and shot helicopter plates and shot these full panos and 180 views. Mark and his team of special effects built this entire gimbaled system with our AirPod on top. We were able to capture all the little shadings, all the little bits of interactive light on the actors' faces. You see someone's body shift, and you see that, and you feel all those different things are the things that you just can't fake. 
We really tried to take reality as much as possible and make it feel like our world in a new way. Filmmaking in some ways it has its roots in magic. And so, so much of filmmaking is doing the hard work to make what's on screen look effortless. One of the things I'm proudest of this season is the technical accomplishment. It's this marriage of those shots. Some of them are almost completely CG. Some of them are almost completely practical, but they all work together to give you the reality of this one moment of this woman who we have seen trapped, finally made it to the outside world. You want to be with her and not for a second doubt the reality of that. For me, the dream is in the environments that you can't actually go to, create that space, take your cameras, take your actors, make it as real as possible so that you can really feel this magic trick. Hey, it's Lisa. Did you know that the TV show with the most amount of Emmy Awards is Saturday Night Live? Since its beginnings in 1975, the show has won 54 awards and has been nominated 242 times. Now, do you like my shirt? Are you a sleep-deprived binge watcher? You need to get one of these shirts. Click on the link in the description.